Have you ever driven through a town and wondered how it got its start? I know I have. My name is Angie, and I'm your host on today's episode of Historic Ontario. Today, I'd like to take you through the town of Ancaster and discuss the mills of Ancaster. Ancaster is a historic town on the Niagara Escarpment near Hamilton, Ontario. Sometimes referred to as Ancaster Village by locals, the village was founded in 1792 and was originally referred to as Wilson Mills. The name was given in honor of James Wilson, a millwright, whom along with Richard Beasley, a fur trader, were credited as the first founders of this community, selecting this site based on its close proximity to required resources, such as fresh water, timber, and limestone. They believed this would be the ideal site to erect a mill, and they were not wrong. By 1791, Beasley and Wilson had built the first grist mill and followed that in 1792 with a sawmill, making Ancaster home to the only mills west of Grimsby, Ontario, and it remained that way for many years. At that time, Ancaster was no more than a few buildings surrounded by small Aboriginal communities and a bunch of farmers. In fact, Main Street Ancaster was once part of the original Iroquois Trail, a trail created and used by the First Nations people to travel and migrate. Knowing that a town could not thrive without community, Wilson set to work to build a general store, blacksmith shop, a distillery, and a tavern, all within walking distance of the mills. Constructed to entice workers and families to the community, and it did. Workers began to arrive and build homes nearby the mill, and the village began to take shape. Wilson noticed the need and began to offer his own residence for the use of a school, court, and copperage, being a true pillar of the community. By 1793, the land was surveyed and given the name Ancaster Township by John Graves Simcoe, a fan of the Third Duke of Ancaster. At that time, Wilson's Mills was indirectly renamed Ancaster after the original Ancaster in Lincolnshire, England. Then, in 1794, Wilson sold his half of the grist mill and sawmill to John Rousseau St. Jean. Jean was owner of the general store on Wilson Street as well as a home in the community. The Rousseau store was a popular trading post and was quite profitable. As Governor Simcoe's official native and French interpreter and as a confidant and advisor to the native leader Joseph Brandt, Jean had a relationship with the nation's people trading with Joseph Brant's Mohawks and other Iroquois people from the Six Nations frequently. By 1797, Jean would build the Union Hotel and buy out the remaining shares of the mills owned by Beasley. Between 1794 and 1797, Rousseau would go on to add a general store, brewery, and distillery in addition to hiring the first school teacher. Jean's multicultural background would eventually assist in bridging French and English cultures, which was essential for the early development of Ancaster and area. By 1802, John sold the mill to Union Mill Company. Unfortunately, they were soon destroyed by fires in 1812. However, the near 20 years of existence, from 1791 to 1812, had provided the economic and social foundation from Ancaster. Jean Rousseau died at Fort George or Niagara on the Lake of Pleurisy during the War of 1812. The Eggleston brothers, Harris and Alonzo, arrived in 1832 and worked at William Ward's foundry. They eventually bought him out. Harris and Alonzo then proceeded to expand their own empire, which included construction of a foundry in 1843. The foundry employed 25 people at that time. The next task was to rebuild the grist mill. By 1863, the mill was complete at the current location of Old Ancaster Mill and the Old Dundas Road. The Eggleston Mill was the fourth Ancaster Mill and the third to be rebuilt on this location. Wilson's original mill burnt down in 1812. Upon rebuilding, Wilson's mills were relocated from the original site at Wilson and Rousseau Street a little further downstream and rebuilt in stone at the present old Ancaster Mill location on Dundas Road. Again, 
At the same location, a second mill burnt down in 1818, as well as a third mill that was damaged by fire in 1854. Wilson's original 1791 to 1792 mill foundation still exists 75 yards upstream from the Wilson and Rousseau Street intersection, but is currently hidden by vegetation. The mill which stands today has a rich history spanning over 200 years and can be referred to as the heart of Ancaster, as this is where it all began. Although the building which stands today is not the original wood-framed building, as the first three mills were, the stone structure you see before you today was built in 1863. Constructed of limestone quarried from the grounds of the mill, with a wall base as thick as four feet, the mill is considered one of the most substantial stone buildings in the province. Erected prior to the inventions of steam and electric power, the mill stands as a reminder of the sheer power of determination and ingenuity. Ancaster Mill continued to operate as a mill until it was sold in 1972. The new owners renovated and reopened in February of 1979 as a restaurant and special events venue. The mill continues to offer great food, a wonderful atmosphere, and a rich history. Not to mention the picturesque scenery and beautiful waterfalls that you find on site. I thank you for taking this journey with me today and hope that you will subscribe and like this video. I look forward to us traveling together again soon. So thank you very much. Come back soon. Bye-bye.